Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo. Today we'll be taking a look at the top brand new features, changes, enhancements that's a part of Samsung One UI 6 beta program with Android 14. Now this just launched yesterday. It is available for T-Mobile and unlocked Galaxy S23 devices in the countries of United States, Germany, and South Korea. So first we'll take a look at some of what I think is the top brand new features or enhancements. Then we'll take a look at some honorable mentions. And then we'll also take a look at some fixes that are needed and a few different changes that I'm hoping to see here in the upcoming updates. Now the first feature that we'll talk about today is one that allows you to actually use two hands to do some drag and drop. So you can actually move images from your gallery inside of text messages, very simple. You can move applications to other screens. You can move files from one folder to another folder because what you used to do, uh, or I should say maybe what you have right now is in order for you to actually move this application into another screen, what you would have to do is exactly what I was showing you. You would have to pick it up, drag it and move it over, wait for the screen to move over and then you're able to drop it. Now. Now, they were basically able to take away the palm rejection or finger rejection. So this way, if you're trying to move something, all you have to do is just swipe with your other hand. So this is a two hand operation. Basically, it allows you to do a drag and drop. It also allows you to do something like this. Let's say that you are inside of your gallery and you wanted to press and hold on a couple images. Maybe there's two images you would like to share. So now what you can do is you can press and hold. You have it sitting right here. I can actually swipe up out of there. I can use my other finger, go into a conversation, drag and drop it, and now you're able to just send this thing away. And another thing that you're able to do is let's say, I don't know, we'll do almost the exact same thing. You have both of these two images here. Let's say that you go back, you'll be able to go inside of another folder. You can head inside of Samsung Notes. You can actually open up a brand new note and then you can actually just drop it right inside of there. Or maybe another thing you would like to do is let's say that you go inside of your My Files. So let's see, let's find the Samsung folder. You go to My Files and let's say we go inside of Internal Storage and let's just take a look at music. And let's say that we wanted to move a couple of these songs to another location. You can actually just, again, drag and drop it. Uh, once you press and hold, you're gonna just you know hold on to it. You can actually move it up. You can either drop it into your internal storage or you can actually tap on the internal storage. I can move it over into download and then I can put it into another folder up here um, or I can just let it go. And now those two documents or those two files, whatever it may be, is now actually sitting inside of my download folder. So this actually just came in handy for me because I did do a clear cache, clear partition on my home screen because I thought it was having issues. And so one of the things that I was doing was creating all of my folders again. So let's say that you press and hold on this, you select on a couple of these. And then if you wanted this to go somewhere else, basically I can just swipe up, I can head right back inside of the home. I can swipe over and then I can put it either there or inside of a folder. Now, feature number two is a updated music player box. So basically when you go inside of, let's say YouTube music and you wanted to play a song. So as you're taking a look at this one, maybe you headed right back home. And then at any point in time, you pull down the notifications panel. You do see your little widget right here, the little box of the music player. But this right here is what is new. You have the album artwork on the back end of it. You have all of the music moving around it's aesthetically pleasing to the eye. But this right here is what is new. This is what I wish would just show up instantly the moment you pull down. So again, this is one of those areas I'm hoping for an improvement. If this is what's new, might as well show it right off the very beginning. And it's actually not even that much bigger. It's about 30% bigger, I think. But you do see it when you take a look at the lock screen. So let's say that you take a look at this screen. It's sitting right there in all its glory. It's looking really good. You know, it's nice to take a look at it. You can change music. You know, really do anything and everything you want to. You'll be able to watch all of these waves and all that good stuff. But again, that is the the version of this that I would just like to see through the normal default open of the pull down. So if we're already used to, you know, taking a look at this thing right here and it's kind of old fashioned, you might as well replace it with something that's brand new and flashy. Feature number three, or at least change or enhancement number three is dealing with the application labels. Now what Samsung did from what you're kind of used to already is there's already two lines when it comes down to some of these applications that kind of need two lines to show everything. Samsung on the brand new Samsung One UI 6 put it all into one single line. Now, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it kind of seems like they're kind of cutting off some of the words. You know, I already know what some of these applications are based on what it says below it and also the, the logo or the, the app icon, but this is gonna be one of the changes that they did in One UI 6, which is putting everything on a single line versus using double lines to kind of make it, you know, a little bit 
uh, maybe better in terms of trying to save space. So they're just trying to streamline and go down to one single label line. Feature number four, or there's actually a lot of changes inside of number four, and that is inside of the camera. So inside of the camera, one of the changes that you will notice is that when you go inside of, let's say, just the photo, what you're going to notice is on the very top, they did change uh, what it looks like if you're trying to change the aspect ratio. They made it look just a little bit different. And then also, too, along with that, they added in the change where if you wanted to switch from the 12 megapixel to 50 megapixel over into 200 megapixel to actually switch it between which resolutions you would like to use. Now, when it comes down to the 50 megapixels over here, you know, you're gonna have the option of the three by four. So in order for me to do a 50 megapixel image, I would have to tap inside over here and then switch it over to that option there. Over here, all you'd have to simply do is just switch it to whichever one you would like to use. And then it's gonna just basically switch the lenses of what you're using. And then you just choose how you want to take the photo, a three by four or nine by 16. And then they also did something very similar when it comes down into video. Now this is something that I do love and there's actually a couple changes here and this is where you can also change or see the change of the defaulted font. So this one is, is the brand new default. You can see that it's changed a little bit, especially with the numbers, you can see the difference. And also too, the steady shot has changed. So this is right here, that's super steady. So now it's kind of like this running person versus a vibrating hand. So super steady logo has changed. And then you also have your changes right here of uh, how you would like to have it set up of the aspect ratio, nine by 16, one by one, whatever. And then here's your resolution. Now with this one, you can see the bigger difference and this is the one that I like the most. So you can change between the full HD, you do 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, ultra HD, 30 or 60. There's your 8K, 30 frames per second. So rather than you going up through here and just seeing a little line and there's, and it kind of seems like there's less options to kind of do, uh, this one is still gonna be very similar. It just kind of gives you the option to choose if you want 30 frames, 60 frame, ultra HD, and it's just kind of set up different but I think it to be a little bit more easier to use. Now, a couple other things that they that they went through and changed is gonna be inside of the settings up over here. There's an option right here called Enhanced Intelligence Options. Advanced Intelligent Options gives you the options to choose different quality optimizations. So this actually kind of came over from GoodLock. So GoodLock gave you the option that you're able to make these changes. So you have the option of quality optimization, so you can either have as maximum, you also have medium, which is speed up the capture time by doing less optimization. And then minimum, take pictures as fast as possible by not optimizing pictures after they're taken. So I don't know why too many people choose this one. Maybe there are certain situations, um, but yeah, most people will probably do medium or maximum. Most people would rather have the better quality images. So maximum should be the one that you would like to use. And then scene optimizer is sitting in there as well. Now also too, watermark was one where once you turned it on, it was on. You weren't really able to make any changes with it. So with the brand new watermark, you can put in like date and time. You can edit the name. So if you want this to say something completely different, I mean, you can actually put in your name if you want to, if you don't want to have the phone's model name. Uh, and then if we were to take a look at the rest, you can change the font and then you can change the alignment. So if you want it to be on the left, the right, uh, if you want it at the top, the bottom, wherever you want it to go, I don't believe that they had this many options beforehand. I know for a fact you weren't really fully able to change every single location of the name and the font and the date and the time and putting the name in. Usually you just kind of turn on watermark and that's it. I never really played with it too much. I didn't need the watermark. I would rather have it just be clean. But if you're somebody who loves watermark, there's a bunch of those brand new changes. Now, the last thing that I want to show off inside of the camera settings is this option here that is called auto frames per second. So this is when you're dealing with video mode and it's low light conditions. So you're able to record brighter videos in low light conditions by automatically optimizing the frame rate in video mode. So you can either have this one off, you can use it for 30 frame per second videos only, or you can do it for the 30 frame per second and 60 frame per second videos. So as I was mentioning from before, you know, with some of the good lock stuff in here, so camera assistant is technically part of good lock. And so that's kind of where I think some of the stuff actually kind of moved over. So Samsung is kind of bringing a few things from good lock. Some of the stuff that is, you know, helpful and beneficial in putting it over into the stock Samsung one UI, which is also very cool to see. Now let's take a look at the thing that you have seen everywhere. It's in basically every single blog, almost every single person's thumbnail. And that is the quick access of looking at all of this quick settings panel. So basically what you're able to do, you know, as you know from before, you're able to use two fingers to pull down. It opens up every single thing, not just a notifications panel. It goes past it. It goes inside of all of the quick settings sitting right here, um, or you'd have to swipe down twice. They do have the option now where you have the instant access. So you have to swipe it 
on the extreme right hand side. Now, if you move over just a little bit, it actually wouldn't work. So it's one of those things that's kind of nice, um, unless if you're actually always doing it on the very, 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 very corner. But hey, you have instant access to everything, pulling it all the way down. Now, this is what it looks like now. They pretty much put the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the very top. So they took it from here, moved it to the top in their separate sections. The awesome thing about it is that I can actually tap over here and I can take a look at a bunch of stuff in terms of Bluetooth. Or if I want to deal with the actual Bluetooth that I'm connected with now, I can either tap on that icon, which is basically turn it off, or I can press and hold on this icon and then it's going to bring me into all of the settings again. So either you can just tap there or what you can do is you can do a press and hold uh, on the big word or you can press and hold on the icon. So I've always done it with the icon from back in the past, but hey, you can tap on the icon now to turn it off or tap over here to fully expand it. So I thought they made things very easy. They put all of the brightness stuff here. So this is dealing with your brightness line, the eye comfort shield, dark mode. So these two things that would normally be up here is now in this area. Smart view and device control is now in the bottom. I kind of wish what they did was put these ones back on top. Like maybe put these two maybe right underneath your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So you, then at least maybe this brightness bar can come down to the bottom. So then this can come down towards the bottom too. Because one thing I did like about this old version over here is that when you did, you know, swipe down twice to get into any of these quick settings by the reach of a thumb is very easy because the top is just taken up by two buttons and then the date and the time. So my thumb is able to reach all this. And now my thumb has to reach higher to get up to some of these, even the ones that are sometimes one of the most used. So I think maybe they can rearrange this. And I guess one thing that they could also do is just bring this entire box, bring it all the way down and then bring these two up accordingly and put them to the top. And if they think that these are the ones that are used most often or the ones that might be touched, then maybe bring those down here a little bit more too. But whatever the case, they don't have to be on the very, very top. I just kind of wish that this whole area here would be on the very, very bottom. Again, easier access with the reach of a thumb. But this is the change. I do like it. I think it looks good. It kind of took away from the dark mode that we used to have, um, but they did kind of still blurred the background of it. And then since we're talking about this screen here, I mean, one thing, you know, we got away from this dark mode type version. Now we got this lighter mode over here. You know, we do have that very, very blurred background. It keeps it colorful. You know, I kind of get what they're doing. You can really see everything broken down and into their different sections. I get it. If they kept it very, very dark, you wouldn't be able to see the sections. And then up over here, they actually made it very easy to understand when you're trying to make the changes. So up here you have edit buttons and that's just changing everything here. And then you also have quick panel layout. So the quick panel layout and stuff is going to be over here, status bar. So a lot of it is just kind of moved around. And so they really made it very simple and easy to know, Hey, if I edit this, it's changing what is on the top. If I edit here, it's going to be changing everything that's in the middle, which is this entire box, you know, that we see right there. So I think they did a pretty good job at this. Only thing again, move this piece down. So this way we'd have easier access with the reach of a thumb. Now, another thing they did inside of the gallery is this little icon right here. So what you would have to do on the previous Samsung phones is swipe up. It'll give you the details of the image. It basically shows you uh, when you took it, where you took it. Also, you can do, you know, forward, reverse, uh, forward and reverse. You can take a look at it in stories. It's basically like an info page of the image. And one of the nice things about this one here is that it also brings in a quick edit option. So beforehand, you didn't really have that. So it would show basically nothing other than when you took it, where you took it, where is it stored. And now you have this option here that is some quick edit options. You can remaster it, do a portrait effect, or even do object eraser. And since we're talking about that, let's say we go inside of the editing version or the photo editor. One of the things you can see is that they also kind of changed the way some of these things actually look. Uh, they made this dial down here look a little bit better. So if you needed to, you know, uh, change the way that it looked, if you needed to rotate it. Um, I mean, there's, there's so many different things, but I feel like they did a much better job on this version sitting right over here. And then you actually have this little magic button over here and you can do an auto adjustment. So that is kind of similar to this one over here. It just kind of does it for you. It put it into a four by three image. It did whatever it needed to do to uh, enhance it. So it's like a magic enhance or a one touch enhance. So you can do that here, but here is where basically your color mix is at, the style, the spot color, lasso, object eraser. Then here's that auto adjust, which is basically what we did here. Now, all of this stuff that you're seeing was sitting over here inside of this little, you know, three dots on the bottom right hand side, object color spot or the object eraser spot color style color mix. So all of these will just be sitting right here. 
rather than having to try to find where it's located. And some people didn't even know you go inside of here and you hit those three dots and, you know, there are some of those options sitting right there. So they did enhance and do a whole overview or a redo, I should say, or enhanced view of photo editor. So how about we kill two birds with one stone on this one? There's actually a couple improvements that is kind of working together. The first one is going to be Samsung Smart Select. And then we're going to talk about image pin. So you can actually pin an image to your window or to your homepage so you can access it later. So maybe it's a conversation, maybe it's numbers, maybe it's a date on a calendar or whatever. But let's take a look over at Samsung Smart Select right now. So this one's pretty nice because not only is it giving me the ratio if it's, you know, 16 by 9, 5 by 3, 3 by 4, 3 by 2. Not only is it giving me that, but I'm also able to see exactly where the cutoff is with this little magnifier on the top left or top right, depending on where you are located when you're doing this Samsung Smart Select right here. So if you wanna get at the very, very edge of this phone, now you can actually do it. And maybe it was harder to do beforehand because you know your, your finger was in the way. So now that you've done this, you can extract the text, you can save it, you can download it, but here you can actually pin this image to your home screen, to a window, whatever. It's gonna sit there, you can move it around, you can change its size. And also too, what you can do is you can actually bring this one, press and hold, you can drag and drop it inside of a conversation, email, uh, you know, note taking application, whatever it may be, and then you can send it on off to them. And even through here, you can even extract text. Now the, the extract text wasn't there at this stage, Usually you have to do it at the first stage, which was Samsung Smart Select. And so they were, you know, pretty nice to bring it into the fact that you can now actually do it after the fact. You can download it still now. You can make this one smaller and minimized, or you can just exit out. Now let's take a look at the weather application. So there is a update with this one and also a updated widget. So you would have to scroll down. And also too, you saw this man kind of walk in here with the backwards hat. So they did add in a little bit more animation when it comes down to this. So as you scroll on down, you're gonna see a little bit of changes when it comes down to this. You have this area here that wasn't sitting over here. Uh, you, have, you still have the UV index, the humidity. Uh, here's the wind. This one right here now has dew point. Here's your sunrise and sunset, but it's gonna be right here. And also too, you know, they added in you know, the visibility, the dew point, the, the uh, pressure. You also have your uh, moon phases. So you can see when the moon, you know, is rising and setting or coming up, coming down, and then it's telling you which phase it is. So this is the waning crescent. So very, very cool that they were able to add in some brand new features, some new information when it comes down to this, this weather application. And also too, they have a brand new widget and this one is telling you what could be happening. So beforehand, there wasn't as many widgets when it came down to the weather. And this is one that actually gives you like a situational thing. So this is letting you know that tonight there are storms possible and it's 40%. So when you go inside of widgets and you scroll all the way down, you take a look at weather. The one that we are talking about with this one here is going to be the weather insights. So now let's go inside of the security settings because there's one inside of here that's actually very cool. When you go inside of the security and privacy, as you scroll down, one of the things that was added in brand new is this auto blocker. Now what this does, it's gonna keep your phone safe by blocking threats and other suspicious activities. So it'll block apps from unauthorized stores. It'll turn on app security checks. So it'll do apps installed on your phone will be checked for malicious activity. It blocks commands by USB cable. So malicious chargers, computers, and other uh, devices won't be able to send commands to your phone when connected using a USB. And then there's also some enhanced ones. So block software updates by USB cable and messaging app protection. So this auto blocker right here is pretty sweet to have. Now staying on this same page underneath privacy, you can actually see all of the permissions used in the last 24 hours. So the camera permission was used inside of my camera as well as messages. So if you're opening messages, you want to take a picture and send it to somebody, it has to be authorized to use your camera to take the image, obviously. Same thing with the microphone over here. So I have it with these applications. You can also expand this open. So in the last 24 hours, my nearby devices was used for Google, SmartThings, camera, the Buds Pro Manager, because it's looking for everything that's nearby, you know, using Bluetooth. SMS was using, uh, let's see here, messages, visual messages, Google. Let's say we scroll down. Contacts was used uh, in the background, basically for my Watch 5 Manager, the phone, Google, messages. So yeah, you can, and then location. Location that was used for Life360, Maps, Google, Pokemon Go, Facebook, Outlook, Bixby Voice. So it's pretty cool to actually see everything that's being used in terms of your permissions just right there on one full screen. And it's also timestamps so you can see when it was used or accessed. Now heading over inside of the battery information. So they pretty much put everything into one location. 
and also improve the look of it. So let's say we go inside of device care, you take a look inside of battery. Now inside of battery, you have your power saving, background usage limits, protect battery. You can see my blue areas of when I was charging, which is usually when I'm inside my car. Uh, and then the power usage, so I've used like 80%. And so if you keep on using it, charging it, using it, charging it, your battery percent or battery usage would be over 100%. You can view details and still in the same screen, charging settings, you also have wireless power share, show battery percentage on the top and battery information. If you go inside of view details, you can see everything broken down. And then also with this stuff too, you can see you know, which of these were being used and for how long and also versus the average for the last, you know, seven days. So this one was, let's see here, average daily use over the last seven days was six hours and eight minutes. And that was because it was tracking my sleep at night. That's why it was so high. Pokemon Go looks as if uh, it was active for one hour and 36 minutes. The average daily for seven for the past seven days was two hours and 10 minutes. You know, you can take a look at YouTube, and I'm sure it's going to be much bigger than that. But yeah, so it kind of breaks everything down. You have all these different graphs. You can change all these different days to take a look at a whole bunch of different stuff. And basically, you can just kind of see what you're using, when you're using, if you're using power saving or charging. Uh, and it says last charged to 90%, which is pretty nice. And I stopped charging it an hour and eight minutes ago. So you can actually see where you charged it to which is something very nice to see. Now, another nice change inside of Samsung One UI 6 is gonna be Finder. And Finder is just a way that when you're inside your application tray, you search for anything you want to. And so I see Instagram sitting over here. I don't see Instagram sitting over here. So when you search for an application, maybe you wanna find it, open it, use it. One of the things that they did add in with Samsung One UI 6 is the ability of doing some of these quick actions. So now when you press and hold on it, you can go inside the, the camera, view activity, view post, go inside of chats. But with the previous versions, you're just able to locate it add it to home, uninstall, or do app info. So now you're actually able to do activities and do something with the application with that press and hold from the Finder screen. So now let's take a look at the updated emojis. So the updated emojis, some people mentioned that they didn't really see a big difference with it, but honestly, there was a pretty good difference when you take a look at a few things here. So let's say that we take a look at this and let's say that we open up. Uh, so over here, you can kind of see that they're a little bit bigger. They're a little bit brighter a little bit wider, even some of them are kind of, you know, angled different, some different accents. So when you go through, you can see some of the changes. Some of them are subtle, but they are a little bit changed. And, you know, for me, it's like, I don't really look at these too closely. Uh, I mean, I just kind of do the whole laughing emoji or kissy and like, that's it. I don't really look too close or too hard at it because you kind of get the justification, but they did do a little refresh of all the emojis. Now let's take a look at the lock screen because what you're able to do with the lock screen is you can actually now move the position of the clock or the time. Beforehand, you're pretty much stuck with whatever was pre-built. So let me show you how you can do this and I'm gonna show you the example over here. Now on the old devices over here, you can make them bigger, you can also make them smaller, um, but you can't really move you know, where they, where you want them to go. You literally have to press if you want them at a different location. When it comes down to this one over here, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, and you can actually move them anywhere you want up over here, you know, towards like the main area that you would normally like to see a clock. So it's pretty nice that you're able to finally freely move a clock, move the time when you kind of thought maybe you were able to do it from before. Um, but again, you're kind of stuck with what was pretty much pre-made. You, you were able, you know, able to make them larger and smaller, but you weren't really able to freely move them around like this. So now I wanna talk about the honorable mentions. We already covered all of the top features of Samsung One UI 6. This is one that is an honorable mention. Not everybody's gonna use it, but you can actually go back into Bixby Call during a active phone call. Bixby Call was normally used to screen a call to see who was calling, maybe you didn't wanna to speak to them and you didn't know the phone number, but now you can actually go into the Bixby Call. You can actually, they're able to you know hear everything. It kind of sounds like, you know, like a computer, um, but at least you can see exactly what they are saying. Now, this would come in handy if you didn't want to speak to the person anymore. And it'll also come in handy, I thought of it, somebody who's deaf, maybe a family member who is deaf, they're not able to read lips or not in person to see everything or do sign language. So this is kind of a way that you would be able to uh, have a phone call conversation through text that is able to be written, said back to them, they talk back, and then you're able to read what they stated. So I thought that was a pretty cool honorable mention. Now, another honorable mention, this could be one that you might like, you might not like, but it's going to be the arrow that now pops up when you either swipe left or you swipe right to go back a screen. So anytime that you are going back, you will now see this little arrow, which I think is kind of pulling from, again, 
good luck. And then the last honorable mention is one that is dealing with airplane mode. So what happens the first time you hit airplane mode on your phone, the moment you hit airplane mode, it'll actually you know turn off your mobile data. It'll also turn off Wi-Fi and turn off Bluetooth. Now, after you have already had your Bluetooth, your, your airplane mode turned on, if you went right back in immediately and you turned on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, then the next time that you use airplane mode, it'll remember. And so every single time after that you hit airplane mode, it'll turn on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for you. And now going back to the things that I think that they should improve on, one of them is going to be this area here. We already talked about it. Move the quick panel settings, this main one down to the bottom so this way it's easy for us to access just like it used to be from before again if you can access it with the thumb uh, the easier it is the more you're going to use it and the other thing is going to be with that music player the little tab on the very top rather than using the old style use the brand new one where we don't have to expand it to see the change i would rather see the change immediately rather than having to expand it to see it and the other thing which could only be my phone i don't know I use gestures and every time that I swipe up to go home, um, it does this. It's kind of like it's showing me my application tray and then it kind of cancels it out, which is very annoying. Even if I'm over on this page over here and I swipe up to head home, it, it doesn't do it, which is again, super annoying. I think it's a bug. It's something that they're probably going to fix because if I'm in an application and I swipe up, it does take me home. Everything works perfectly fine when it comes down to me swiping home, swiping back. It takes me where I'm supposed to be. It just doesn't do it when I'm already on the home page, which, you know, if I'm already there, I just want it to cancel out immediately because on all the other Samsung phones, everything I use is with gestures. It just kind of does this. It kind of does a little bit of a bounce. I would rather have a bounce than this weird looking thing. And then also too, if I'm on a sister home page, a page that is right next to the home page, if I swipe up, I want it to take me home, not do the same dang thing here. If I do turn on the navigation buttons, which I've tried it and I've tested it, I've used it. If you hit the home button, it does move right back. And if I'm on the home page and I hit the home button, it does exactly what this does right here, which is just this little baby bounce. So I think that this is a little bug. They just have to fix it. And then lastly, when it comes down to, I guess, the animations, it's pretty fun. When you head right back in, it's almost kind of like a bowl of jello. It kind of bounces a little bit, even if it's an application inside of a folder. With this one, it just kind of goes right back in, it does like a little drip, and then it kind of just stops. So I think that they added in just a little bit more when it comes down to the animations here. So that is everything that I wanted to cover in today's video, everything that's brand new, everything that is noteworthy, at least the top features, the top changes, enhancements, and also to a few areas areas of improvement and a few noteworthy features. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.